There are two sides to every transaction in baseball, the good and the bad. And yesterday we took a look at the bad for the signing of Tommy Lestella by the Mariners. Today we're going to take a look at the good. What can Lestella provide for this team? Is this something that we should really count on? Is Tommy Lestella the guy that Mariners need? Well, let's take a look. I know I was on the other side of the screen for last video. I just like to mess with you. So in 2022, Tommy Lestella hit 245 versus lefties and 190 versus righties. Hey, that's nothing special. And if he is the guy to give Ty France a day out at first base, hey, that's nothing special. But the Mariners are creating depth. The Mariners are looking at one spot for a couple of different guys to fill. And those couple guys right now are Tommy Lestella as well as Colin Moran. Both players could arguably play first and third base and give days off to these other players at first and third base, of course, Gino and Ty France. And the Mariners are going to basically make it a competition. Of course, they could always add more to this mix, or they could add a player that would specifically take over and these guys wouldn't even get a chance. These are Tommy Lostello's numbers where he hit 270 versus right-handed pitching and 254 versus lefties. And as recently as the shortened 2020 season, Tommy Lostello has seen some pretty interesting splits, including hitting 303 versus righties compared to just 216 versus lefties. He also hit five home runs versus righties that year. Colin Moran's 2022, even weirder, he ended up hitting 195 versus righties and 273 versus left-handed pitching, which is basically the polar opposite of what we saw from somebody like Tommy Lestella. However, Colin Moran really didn't play that many games. However, Moran is definitely more of a power bat, hitting about 50 home runs in his career compared to Lestella's 40, and he also has shown throughout his career that he does have splits against righties and lefties that are more common. He's a career 274 hitter versus righties and a 220 hitter versus lefties. So in a perfect scenario, the Mariners are looking at one of these guys to just be a bench bat for you. Hopefully, Dylan Moore and Sam Haggerty are healthy enough to start the season on your roster. You don't need to use one of these guys as a replacement for them while they get healthy. And if that's the case, hopefully the Mariners go out and sign someone else that can play DH or first base, third base. I'm not sure who that player is, and it would probably come via a trade because there's not much left on the trade market. We could look at somebody like David Peralta. I know we've talked about him a lot. I know other places have talked about David Peralta a lot to the Mariners. He makes a bit of sense. And that's the good of this signing and the Colin Moran signing is that you're not really paying these guys very much to maybe possibly be a bench bat for you that could be a solid contributor at any given point in the season. Give Ty France a day off. Give a Eugenio Suarez a day off. Maybe see a few days at DH against right-handed pitching. The problem about not signing another player is that at that point, you're really relying on Jared Kelnick to take over the left field job and run with it because AJ Pollock will have to DH quite a bit in that scenario, or one of these guys will have to DH against a lefty, and you don't really want that. The Mariners very well could be pursuing another bat that we haven't heard about. Somebody that the Mariners will all of a sudden in the middle of spring training say, hey, here it is. Enjoy. Like the Eugenio Suarez deal and Jesse Winker deal. Maybe that's what happens. Who really knows? As a Mariners fan, it's impossible to say with Trader Jerry and Justin Hollander at the helm. Seriously, just 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 buy the hat. It's really nice. So if that is the plan for the Mariners, then adding somebody like Tommy Lastella and Colin Moran to fight for that last spot on the roster to possibly be a bench bat that sees maybe the field once or twice a week. I think that's a great place to be in if you're a Mariners fan. It just all relies very, very heavily on the fact that the Mariners need to make another signing. If they don't make another signing, it's going to look pretty bad. It'll be a very dissatisfying way to end the offseason. And we made a video about that yesterday, if you didn't already watch it, about the bad of this signing. Go ahead and check that out. I appreciate you guys watching this one, and go Mariners.